Hi, welcome to Digging to China. I'm Dong Shang. Thank you for tuning in. Your support means the world and plays a crucial role in the YouTube algorithm. Liking, sharing, and subscribing not only show your support, but also help YouTube recommend my videos to a broader audience. Thank you very much. Today, let's discuss the significant political news that's capturing attention in both China and the United States. On April 2nd, Biden and Xi Jinping held a telephone conversation. According to reports from China, it was a scheduled call. Understanding the significance of the leaders of both nations communicating once more is important. It's not merely about picking up the phone, rather it reveals underlying issues in the China-US relationship. This dialogue also provides insights into the direction of Sino-America relations. Let's begin by exploring how the mainstream media in both China and the United States are covering the recent Biden-Xi phone call. The Xinhua News Agency's news release reported that on the evening of April 2nd, President Xi Jinping of China had a scheduled phone call with President Biden of the United States. During the call, the two leaders engaged in a frank and a thorough discussion on China-US relations and matters of mutual interest. This time, Xinhua News Agency opted not to employ diplomatic terms such as constructive. According to Xinhua News Agency, Xi Jinping highlighted the necessity of addressing the fundamental issues of strategic perceptions as the foremost priority in China-US relations. Xi emphasized that as two major powers, China and the United States should not avoid communication, engagement, or worse, confrontation. Instead, they should mutually respect each other, strive for peaceful coexistence and cooperation, and continue progressing along the path of stability, health, and sustainability, rather than reverting to past conflicts. Xi Jinping emphasized several core principles to be held in Sino-US relations this year, prioritizing harmony, emphasizing stability, and basing actions on trust. This underscores Xi's approach to guiding the direction of the US-China relationship. Furthermore, according to Xinhua News Agency's report, Xi stressed that the Taiwan issue is a red line that must not be crossed in China-US relations. How did the mainstream media in the United States cover it? I've chosen ABC TV station's report, which was fairly standard. The headline reads, Biden speaks with Chinese President Xi Jinping. According to ABC's report, the President Joe Biden spoke on the phone Tuesday with Chinese President Xi Jinping, their first conversation since meeting last November in California. The two leaders were set to speak about climate change, the economic relationship between the US and China, as well as progress on artificial intelligence and countering illegal drug flows such as fentanyl according to a senior administration official. Officials downplayed expectations ahead of Tuesday's call, describing it as a check-in aimed at the administration's effort to maintain regular open lines of communication to responsibly manage competition and prevent unintended consequences. The White House called the conversation candid and constructive. Biden also emphasized the importance of maintaining peace and stability in Taiwan and raised concerns about China's support for Russia's military defense. Based on the reports from mainstream media outlets in both China and the United States, the Biden-Xi phone call appears to have been handled conventionally. However, the actual meeting is far more intricate than what's depicted in these outlets. I've gathered information from various sources and would like to share it with you. Firstly, this Biden-Xi phone call has seen a more subdued approach in the United States public discourse compared to previous ones. Similarly, Chinese media coverage has been relatively restrained. Surprisingly, on the day following the meeting, this news didn't even trend on China's search engine Baidu's hot topics list. It's uncertain whether this was due to intentional suppression by the Chinese Communist Party or simply a lack of interest among Chinese internet users. Regardless, both official sides have opted for a relatively low-key approach in promoting this meeting, marking the first notable characteristic. 
Secondly, the White House conducted a pre-briefing with the media 10 hours before the phone call, indicating that they would provide further details afterward. This approach isn't the standard for the White House. For instance, when Biden recently spoke with allies like uh, the leaders of Israel and Europe, they typically didn't conduct pre-briefings with the media, they simply made the call. Therefore, there is a distinction in how allies and competitors like China are treated. This underscores the difference between internal and external relations and suggests a heightened level of significance attached to the interaction. Thirdly, the official statements released by both China and the United States regarding the leaders' discussions show greater alignment compared to previous instances where discrepancies were more pronounced. An important observation is that in past reports, Chinese state media would sometimes embellish by adding statements that Biden hadn't actually made. For instance, they might include claims like Biden said he does not support Taiwan independence. However, Biden typically only emphasizes the consistent stance of the United States on Taiwan policy. He doesn't make such individual statements. Yet, the Chinese Communist Party would unilaterally depict it to suit their own narrative. Subsequently, the US would rebut such claims, stating that Biden didn't express those views. However, this time, the CCP refrained from such manipulation. Hence, it marks the first instance where the summaries of discussions between the two leaders have shown minimal discrepancies with both sides' reports being relatively consistent. Fourthly, in its commentary on the Biden-Xi meeting, Xinhua news agency highlighted two key points. Firstly, Xi Jinping reiterated that the Taiwan issue represents a red line in China-US relations, underscoring Beijing's stance. Secondly, the two leaders set the tone for the future development of China-US relations. Essentially, Xinhua News Agency suggests that the Beijing's objectives in this conversation revolve around these two points. Among American mainstream media, criticism of the Biden Xi meeting has also emerged, mainly from conservative voices. For instance, a report from the New York Post marked Biden's performance in this meeting. The article's headline reads, How lame was Joe Biden in his latest call with Xi Jinping? The article reads, President Biden informed his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping of the U.S. position on several issues during a call Tuesday. The White House said Xi's response was essentially F you. No, she didn't use those exact terms, but close enough. Biden emphasized the importance of peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait, the rule of law and the freedom of navigation in the South China Sea, and America's commitment to denuclearizing North Korea, the White House reported. And he raised concerns over climate change, China's support for Russia's defense industrial base, and its unfair trade policies, etc. etc. Yet she, per Beijing's readout afterward, stressed that Taiwan was a red line that must not be crossed. She accused Washington of adopting a string of measures to suppress China's trade and technology development and slapping Chinese entities with sanctions which is creating risks. If Washington insists on containing China's high-tech development and depriving China of its legitimate right to development, she lectured Biden. China is not going to sit back and watch. The commentary from New York Post argues that Biden appears too weak while Xi Jinping came across as too assertive, representing a conservative viewpoint on the Biden-Xi phone call. Sixthly, even though both countries adopted a more subdued approach this time without the sensationalism or high-profile promotion seen in the past, the evaluations of the Biden-Xi phone call from both sides indicated that the Chinese Communist Party might still have a limited understanding of the United States or intentionally ignore its current reality. According to the analysis report by Xinhua News Agency, it appears that the Chinese Communist Party still lacks a full understanding of the United States.
They portray the main focus of major achievement of the Biden Xi phone call as the two leaders setting the tone for China US relations. While such a statement may be acceptable in China given Xi Jinping's authoritative position, it doesn't accurately reflect the reality of US politics. In the United States, President Biden doesn't have the unilateral power to dictate the direction of relations with China. Instead, US policy is shaped by a complex interplay of factors including public opinion, party dynamics, and congressional decisions. Therefore, terms like setting the tone and direction are political concepts more relevant to China's context than to the nuanced dynamics of US-China relations. This misunderstanding may stem from the CCP's limited understanding of the US political system or a deliberate oversight of its complexities. It's important to recognize that the US decision making involves a multitude of stakeholders and processes rather than being dictated by one individual or entity. On another note, Xi Jinping's notion of drawing red lines seems more like setting boundaries for himself rather than for others. While the idea of drawing red lines may convey a sense of authority, it appears to be more of an expression of sentiment rather than imposing tangible constraints. For instance, when discussing red lines regarding the Taiwan issue, it's unclear what exactly constitutes these boundaries, especially considering existing US legislation such as the Taiwan Relations Act. Therefore, it seems that Xi Jinping may not have explicitly communicated or defined the red lines to the Americans, particularly to Biden. Instead, it appears he may be using this rhetoric as a display for the Chinese public, showcasing his assertiveness on the global stage. While he may claim to be drawing red lines for the American audience, the actual content of these boundaries seems to hold little relevance or enforceability for the United States. This differs from the conventional understanding of red lines in international relations. For an instance, when Trump set red lines for Kim Jong-un, he explicitly stated that North Korea could not test intercontinental ballistic missiles or conduct nuclear weapons tests. He threatened military action if these boundaries were crossed. Kim Jong-un refrained from crossing these red lines, demonstrating their enforceability and impact on the other party. However, the Chinese Communist Party doesn't seem to abide by such constraints consistently. This lack of understanding or deliberate disregard undermines efforts to ease tensions and foster effective communication between China and the United States, which is quite ludicrous. Thank you for watching. Please like, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.